The Martini Henry was a breech-loading single-shot lever-actuated rifle used by the British Army. It first entered service in 1871, eventually replacing the Snyder Enfield, a muzzle loader converted to the cartridge system. Martini Henry variants were used throughout the British Empire for 30 years. It combined the dropping block action first developed by Henry O. Peabody, in his Peabody rifle, and improved by the Swiss designer Friedrich von Martini, combined with the polygonal barrel rifling designed by Scotsman Alexander Henry. Though the Snyder was the first breech loader firing a metallic cartridge in regular British service, the Martini was designed from the outset as a breech loader and was both faster firing and had a longer range. There were four main marks of the Martini Henry rifle produced. Mark I, released in June 1871, Mark II, Mark III, and Mark IV. There was also an 1877 carbine version with variations that included a garrison artillery carbine, an artillery carbine, Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III, and smaller versions designed as training rifles for military cadets. The Mark IV Martini Henry rifle ended production in 1889 but remained in service throughout the British Empire until the end of the First World War. It was seen in use by some Afghan tribesmen as late as the Soviet invasion. Early in 2010 and 2011, United States Marines recovered at least three from various Taliban weapons caches in Marja. In April 2011, another Martini Henry rifle was found near Orgun in Paktika province by United States Army's 101st Airborne Division. Air assault. The Martini Henry was copied on a large scale by Northwest Frontier Province gunsmiths. Their weapons were of a poorer quality than those made by Royal Small Arms Factory, Enfield, but accurately copied down to the proof markings. The chief manufacturers were the Adam Aphrodi, who lived around the Khyber Pass. The British called such weapons pass made rifles. Overview In the original chambering, the rifles fired a round-nosed, tapered head .452 inch, soft hollow-based lead bullet, wrapped in a paper patch giving a wider diameter of .460 to .469 inch, it weighed 485 grains. It was crimped in place with two can lures, grooves on the outside neck of the case, a head of two fiber card or millboard discs, a concave beeswax wad, another card disc and cotton wool filler. This sat on top of the main powder charge inside initially a rimmed brass foil cartridge, later made in drawn brass. The cartridge case was paper lined so as to prevent the chemical reaction between the black powder and the brass. Known today as the .577-450, a bottleneck design with the same base as the .577 cartridge of the Snyder Enfield. It was charged with 85 grains, 5.51 grams of Curtis and Harvey's No. 6 coarse black powder, notorious for its heavy recoil. The cartridge case was ejected to the rear when the lever was operated. The rifle was 49 inches, 124.5 centimeters, long, the steel barrel 33.22 inches, 84 centimeters. The Henry patent rifling produced a heptagonal barrel with seven grooves with one turn in 22 inches, 560 millimeters. The weapon weighed 8 pounds 7 ounces, 3.83 kilograms. A sword bayonet was standard issue for non-commissioned officers, when fitted, the weapon extended to 68 inches, 172.7 centimeters, and weight increased to 10 pounds 4 ounces, 4.65 kilograms. The standard bayonet was a socket-type spike, either converted from the older pattern 1853, overall length 20.4 inches, or newly produced as the pattern 1876, overall length 25 inches, referred to as the lunger. A bayonet designed by Lord Elcho was intended for chopping and other sundry non-combat duties, and featured a double row of teeth so it could be used as a saw, it was not produced in great numbers and was not standard issue. The MK2 Martini Henry rifle, as used in the Zulu Wars, was sighted to 1,800 yards. At 1,200 yards, 1,100 m, 20 shots exhibited a mean deflection from the center of the group of 27 inches, 69.5 centimeters, 
the highest point on the trajectory was 8 feet, 2.44 m, at 500 yards, 450 m. A 0.402 caliber model, the Enfield Martini, incorporating several minor improvements such as a safety catch, was gradually phased in to replace the Martini Henry from about 1,884. The replacement was gradual, to use up existing stocks of the old ammunition. However, before this was complete, the decision was made to replace the Martini Henry rifles with the .303 caliber bolt-action magazine Lee at Ford, which gave a considerably higher maximum rate of fire. Consequently, to avoid having three different rifle calibers in service, the Enfield Martinis were withdrawn, converted to 0.45 caliber, and renamed Martini Henry MK4A, B and C pattern rifles. Some 0.303 caliber black powder carbine versions were also produced, known as the Martini Met Ford, and even 0.303 caliber cordite carbines, called Martini Enfields, as opposed to Enfield Martinis. During the Martini Henry's service life the British Army was involved in a large number of colonial wars, most notably the Anglo-Zulu War in 1879. The rifle was used in the Battle of Isandvalwana, and by the company of the 2nd Battalion, 24th Regiment of Foot at the Battle of Rourke's Drift, where 139 British soldiers successfully defended themselves against several thousand Zulus. The weapon was not completely phased out until 1904. The rifle suffered from cartridge extraction problems during the Zulu War, mostly due to the thin, weak, pliable foil brass cartridges used, they expanded too much into the rifle's chamber on detonation, to the point that they stuck or tore open inside the rifle's chamber. It would eventually become difficult to move the breech block and reload the rifle, substantially diminishing its effectiveness or rendering it useless if the block could not be opened. After investigating the matter, the British Army Ordnance Department determined the fragile construction of the rolled brass cartridge, and fouling due to the black powder propellant, were the main causes of this problem. To correct this, the weak rolled brass cartridge was replaced by a stronger drawn brass version, and a longer loading lever was incorporated into the MK4 to apply greater torque to operate the mechanism when fouled. These later variants were more reliable in battle, although it was not until smokeless nitro powders and copper-coated bullets were tried out in these rifles in the 1920s that accuracy and 100% reliability of cartridge case extraction was finally achieved by Birmingham ammunition makers, Kynock. English hunters on various safaris, mainly in Africa, found the martini using a cordite charge and a 500-grain full metal jacketed bullet effective in stopping large animals such as hippopotamus up to 80 yards away. The nitro-based slash shotgun powders were used in Kainaka's .577-450 drawn brass martini Henry cartridge case as well into the 1960s for the commercial market, and again were found to be very reliable and, being smokeless, eliminated fouling issues. The powders burning with less pressure inside the cartridge case prevented the brass cases from sticking inside the rifle's chamber, because they were not expanding as much as the original black powder loads did. The rifle remained a popular competition rifle at National Rifle Association meetings, at Bisley, Surrey, and, NRA, civilian and service rifle matches from 1872-1904 where it was used up to 1,000 yards using the standard military service ammunition of the day. By the 1880s the .577-.450 Boxer Henry round was recognized by the NRA as a 900-yard cartridge, as shooting the martini out to 1,000 yards or, three-fourths of a mile, was difficult, and took great skill to assess the correct amount of windage to drop the 485-grain bullet on the target. But by 1904 more target shooters were using the new .303 calories cartridge, which was found to be much more accurate, and thus interest in the .577-450 fell away, to the point that by 1909 they were rarely used at Bisley matches, with shooters favoring the later Lee Enfield bolt-action magazine rifles. In 1879, however, it was generally found that in average hands the .577-450 Martini Henry Mk2, although the most accurate of the Martinis in that caliber ever produced for service life, 
was really only capable of hitting a man-sized target out to 400 yards. This was due to the bullet going subsonic after 300 yards and gradually losing speed thereafter, which in turn affected consistency and accuracy of the bullet in flight. The 415 grain Martini carbine load introduced in 1878 shot better out to longer ranges and had less recoil when it was fired in the rifles, with its reduced charge of only 75 grains of Curtis and Harvey's. It was found that, while the rifle with its 485 grain bullet shot point of aim to 100 yards, the carbine load when fired in the rifles shot 12 inches high at the same range but then made up for this by shooting spot on out to 500 yards. These early lessons enabled tactics to be evolved to work around the limitations of this large, slow and heavy caliber during the Zulu War. During most of the key battles, such as Rourke's Drift and the Battle of Ulundi, the order to volley fire was not given until the Zulus were at or within 400 yards. The ballistic performance of A.577-450 is somewhat similar to that of A.45-70 American government round, as used prolifically throughout the American frontier west and by buffalo hunters, though the .577-450 has more power due to its extra 15 grains of black powder inside the cartridge case. It is clear from early medical field surgeons' reports that at 200 yards the rifle really came into its own and inflicted devastating and horrific wounds on the Zulus in the Anglo-Zulu War. The MK2 Martini's sights are marked to 1,800 yards, but this setting was only ever used for long-range mass volley firing to Harrison artillery position or a known massed cavalry position, prior to a main fight, and to prevent or delay infantry attacks. A similar drop volley sight whereby the rifle's bullets were dropped long range onto the target were employed on the later .303 Lee Enfield rifles of WW1, which had a graduation lever sight calibrated up to 2,800 yards. The Nepalese produced a close copy of the British Martini Henry incorporating certain Wesley Richards improvements to the trigger mechanism but otherwise very similar to the British Mark II. These rifles can be identified by their Nepalese markings and different receiver ring. A noticeably different variant incorporating earlier Wesley Richards ideas for a flat spring driven hammer within the receiver in lieu of the coil spring powered striker of the Von Martini design, known as the Gahendra rifle, was produced locally in Nepal. While generally well made, the rifles were produced substantially by hand, making the quality extremely variable. Though efforts were being made to phase out these rifles, presumably by the 1890s, some 9,000 were still in service in 1906. The Martini Henry saw service in World War I in a variety of roles, primarily as a reserve arm, but it was also issued, in the early stages of the war, to air crew for attacking observation balloons with newly developed incendiary ammunition, and aircraft. Martini Henrys were also used in the African and Middle Eastern theaters during World War I, in the hands of native auxiliary troops. Greener Shotgun A shotgun variant known as the Greener Police Gun or the Greener Prison Shotgun was chambered in a round used only by this rifle, that would make the weapon useless to anyone who stole it, as no other cartridge could be loaded. An example can be seen at the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds. Greener also used the Martini action for the GP single-barreled shotgun firing standard 12-bore ammunition, which was a staple for gamekeepers and rough shooters in Britain up to the 1960s. Greener Harpoon Gun WW Greener also used the Martini action to produce the Greener Martini light harpoon gun used for whaling, and also for commercial harvest of tuna and other large fish. The gun fired a blank cartridge to propel the harpoon. A special barrel and stock were fitted to accommodate the harpoon and to lower weight. A greener harpoon gun is used by Quint in the 1975 movie Jaws. Turkish, Romanian and Boer Republic's Peabody Martini Henry Rifles Unable to purchase Martini Henry Rifles from the British because their entire production was going to rearming British troops, Ottoman Turkey purchased weapons identical to the Mark I from the Providence Tool Company in Providence, Rhode Island. United States, the manufacturers of the somewhat similar Peabody rifle, and used them effectively against the Russians in the Russo-Turkish War, 1877-1878. The Ottoman Turkish outlaw and folk hero Hikamala famously used the rifle during his raids on landowners. 
The rifle is referred to as Anal Martin in Turkey and features in several famous folk songs. A now scarce variant of the Peabody Martini Henry built by Stair was adopted by Romania in 1879. Significant numbers of the basic design, with variations, were also produced for the Boer Republics, both in Belgium and, via Wesley Richards, in Birmingham, as late as the late 1890s. Operation of the Martini Action The lock and breech are held to the stock by a metal bolt, A. The breech is closed by the block, B, which turns on the pin, C, that passes through the rear of the block. The end of the block is rounded to form a knuckle joint with the back of the case, D, which receives the force of the recoil rather than the pin, C. Below the trigger guard the lever, E, works a pin, F, which projects the tumbler, G, into the case. The tumbler moves within a notch, H, and acts upon the block raising it into the firing position or allowing it to fall according to the position of the lever. The block, B, is hollowed along its upper surface, I, to assist in inserting a cartridge into the firing chamber, J. To explode the cartridge the block is raised to position the firing mechanism, K, against the cartridge. The firing mechanism consists of a helical spring around a pointed metal striker, the tip of which passes through a hole in the face of the block to impact the percussion cap of the inserted cartridge. As the lever, E, is moved forward the tumbler, G, revolves and one of its arms engages and draws back the spring until the tumbler is firmly locked in the notch, H, and the spring is held by the rest piece, L, which is pushed into a bend in the lower part of the tumbler. After firing, the cartridge is partially extracted by the lock. The extractor rotates on a pin, M, and has two vertical arms, N, which are pressed by the rim of the cartridge pushed home into two grooves in the sides of the barrel. A bent arm, O, forming an 80 degrees angle with the extractor arms, is forced down by the dropping block when the lever is pushed forward, so causing the upright arms to extract the cartridge case slightly and allow easier manual full extraction. As well as British service rifles, the Martini breech action was applied to shotguns by the Greener Company of Britain, whose single-shot EP riot guns were still in service in the 1970s in former British colonies. The Greener GP shotgun, also using the Martini action, was a favorite rough-shooting gun in the mid-20th century. The Martini action was used by BSA and latterly BSA slash Parker Hale for their series of small action Martini small bore target rifles that were in production until 1955. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.